Welcome. This video is going to talk about the last two trends we're concerned with on the periodic table. This is ionization energy and electronegativity. You'd probably find it helpful to have a periodic table handy as we go through this video. So ionization energy is defined as the energy required to remove an electron from a gaseous atom. And so how much energy does it take to pull an electron off? And more than one electron can be re removed from an atom. And in fact, every electron can be removed from an atom. That's what that fourth state of matter, plasma, is, is when all the electrons have been removed. But each electron will require a different amount of energy to remove it. And the second, and then the third, and then the fourth, and so on, each electron you remove always requires more energy than the previous electron. And that's because there's always going to be fewer electrons left to repel the remaining electrons and help push the electron out and you're going to be moving to electrons that are closer and closer to the nucleus and held more tightly. So that's why your book will talk about first ionization energy or you may see the term second ionization energy. We're going to be dealing with what we call first ionization energy and that's the energy needed to remove the first electron from an atom. If you're going to remove a second electron then we call it the second ionization energy. If you move a third electron, big surprise, it's called the third ionization energy. And interesting trend is that energies will spike or have a huge increase when you reach inner electron levels. So you could tell what family or how many valence electrons an element has by looking at its energy levels. And let me show you what I mean. When you look here, you see lithium has one valence electron, and the energy to remove the first electron from lithium is 520 and that's kilojoules per mole. So, okay, big deal, 520. So that takes off the first valence, the, the only valence electron. So then if you try and take the next electron off, now suddenly you need 7,300 kilojoules per mole. Beryllium has two valence electrons, so the first two come off with 900 and 1,760 kilojoules per mole. But to get that third one, when you go into an inner level, now suddenly it takes 14,850. And if I just randomly jump down here to nitrogen, I see a steady increase in ionization energies until right here, between five and six, I see a huge increase. Well, if we look, sure enough, nitrogen has five valence electrons. And even neon being a noble gas, which won't easily give up its electrons, we still see a pretty steady increase in ionization energy until we try and take that ninth electron, we try to go to an inner energy level, and then the amount of energy just gets ridiculously high. So that's one way you can tell how many valence electrons are in an atom and helps you work with unknown elements if you can look at ionization energies. So as we talk about ionization energies and try and figure out their trends, it's important to think about whether big atoms will have large or small ionization energies. Will it take a lot of energy to take an electron off a big atom? Or will it take a small amount of energy compared to smaller atoms? And as you think about that then, which family should have the greatest ionization energy and which family should have the least ionization energy? In other words, which family should be the hardest to take an electron from? which family should be the easiest. Ionization energy, remember, is the energy needed to remove an electron from an atom. So low ionization energy means the atom loses electrons easily and should be a big atom. So low ionization, big atom. Big atoms lose more easily, remember? The large atoms are to the left, especially to the lower left. Those are the losers, those are big atoms. High ionization energy means the atom doesn't easily lose their electrons, so these are going to be the smaller atoms. So what that means for trends is ionization energy is going to increase as you go across a period, because as you go across a period, atoms get smaller, the nucleus gets more positive or stronger, and electrons are held more tightly. Ionization energy is going to decrease as you go down a family because atoms get bigger as you go down a family as you add another energy level and the electrons are further away from the nucleus which makes those electrons easier to lose or pull off. 
So if you can remember about the size, really the only trend you have to remember is atomic radii, and then you can reason these others out. Big atoms are going to be easier or take less ionization energy to remove an electron. Small atoms are going to take more. So that means group 1A is the largest family of atoms, so they're going to be the easiest to remove electrons from and have the lowest ionization energies. Group 8A, they're the smallest family. They're going to be really hard to remove an electron from since they're the noble gases, and they're going to have the highest ionization energies. And close behind group 8A is going to be group 7A with very high ionization energies. What this chart here shows you is a single blue line like this one connects a period, hydrogen and helium, and it shows you as you go across period one, you, know, you can't quite see that this is period one here, but as you go across period one, the ionization energy indeed goes up. And as you go across period two from lithium to uh, neon, again, the ionization energy overall increases. Now we see a couple dips there, which um, we'll talk about probably in the chemistry when you start looking at the LCD orbital. But overall, the trend is it increases. Family three, same thing, we see it increase. The other thing you notice is as you're going across the same period here, or as you're going down the family of hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, and rubidium, the um, ionization energy is getting lower and lower as the elements in family one get bigger and bigger. So let's try a few predictions. Which should have the higher first ionization energy, Mg or Na? Well, if I look at Mg and Na, they are in the same period. Mg is further right, Na is further left, so that means this is going to be the bigger atom, this is going to be the smaller atom, so this is going to have the higher ionization energy and sodium would take less ionization energy. So how about sulfur and oxygen? Well again I need to locate them on my periodic table and I see they're both in the same family. Sulfur is below oxygen or oxygen is above sulfur so that makes sulfur the bigger atom oxygen, the smaller atom, so sulfur is going to take less energy to ionize, oxygen will take more energy to remove an electron from. So what's electronegativity? Electronegativity is basically the opposite of ionization energy. It's the ability of an atom to attract or gain electrons. So low electronegativity means an atom does not easily attract or gain electrons. So think about it, this should be your bigger atoms. Big atoms, the nucleus is down buried away, it's long ways away from the neighbor's electrons, it's not easily going to be able to attract or gain those electrons. High electronegativity means the atom does easily gain or attract electrons because its nucleus is close to those neighbor's electrons, so these are going to be your smaller atoms. So the trends with electronegativity is just like ionization energy increases across a period, so does electronegativity. As it becomes harder to remove an electron, it becomes easier to attract an electron. So these go hand in hand. So for the same reasons that ionization energy increases, electronegativity will also increase across a period. Your atoms are smaller. Your positive nucleus is growing stronger, and these atoms are able to attract neutron electrons more strongly. The electronegativity will decrease down a group because as you get bigger atoms, there's more distance between the nucleus and the neighbors. As we look at these last couple of slides, it's all about knowing if they're bigger or smaller atoms. So predict which atom has the greater electronegativity, and when I look at calcium and barium, they're in the same that. They're in the same family. Calcium is above barium, or barium is below calcium. Either way, this means calcium is the smaller atom, barium is the bigger atom, so the greater electronegativity 
is going to be with calcium, being the smaller atom. Finally, sodium and aluminum. If I find these two, I see they're in the same they're in the same period. So I look across. Aluminum is much further right than sodium, which is to the left. So that means sodium is the larger atom. Aluminum is the smaller atom. So again, my smaller atom is going to have the greater electronegativity or more easily attract electrons.